and welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing something I've always wanted to do. I'm gonna review not only my camera bag, but what's inside my camera bag. So I've been traveling the world for the past five years, and during those five years, through trial and error, I feel like I've been really been able to pin down what goes into my camera bag. Now this is based on someone who is doing Instagram photography, filmmaking for professional clients, drone photography, underwater photography, YouTube vlogging. Now I'm doing a whole variety of things and with a limited amount of space, you really need to know what goes into your camera bag. So I hope for those of you who are uh, interested in getting into travel filmmaking and those of you who are already in it and just looking for some inspiration ideas, how other people are doing it, I hope that this video will give you exactly that. I'm also gonna link a list below which will take you directly to a web page where I've linked everything that goes into this camera bag for later review. All right, let's just jump into it. Starting off, the bag itself. For the past five years, I've really been looking for a bag that can deliver me both the elegant design but also functionality. And that's why, this is no brand endorsement by the way, but this is why I picked up the 31 liter from Wander. So, put in perspective, this thing is 31 liters and it has everything that I need to have when I'm doing my filmmaking, travel, photography, wherever I am in the world. Everything I need is in this bag. It's also small enough to go through the airport security gate, you don't need to check it in. It also looks nice when you're wearing it. Now what I really like is in the back here, so this is the only area that people really can not get to if you're in a crowded area. And then made this little passport protection holder right here where I also keep, you know, photos of my <laughs> cool memories. You can have some cash there, whatever you need. It's, it's basically the safest spot of the entire backpack. On the top they have this compartments we can you can add an additional 20 liter just by you know wrapping it up so on the top here I have everything that I don't get to keep within the camera bag itself on the side on the front here there's a section for keys and just you know cutlery I, what else do I have here <laughs> I have a I have a toothbrush you know things that you can't really organize other places within the backpack itself on the other side here, they have made a compartment which is a direct access to your inner camera protection unit. And here I can have direct access to my A7 III. I also have a kit lens on this side, but I'll jump into that once we open the camera bag. It has this nice coating all the way around it, which really makes it waterproof. I've had this bag for three months now, and I've tested it to the limits, traveling non-stop for three months. It really, lo it really looks like I bought it yesterday still. The top and the back, you have a second little secret compartment here. Same goes for the back here. Here's where I keep like super glue and things that might... <laughs> if you're a filmmaker, you know what I'm talking about. You need to have super glue or tape with you. You never know what can go wrong. They've actually put like a lens cap holder here. So when you're shooting and taking off your lens cap, you can fold it under there. There's also a lot of different uh, attachment areas here. So whatever you need, you know, you just grapple it on. And for the very, very last function that's outside of the bag, under here is where you can keep your raincoat. So if it really starts hammering on you, I've had that happen to me. I was on a boat in the middle of the ocean. It just started pouring down. Within five seconds, I had a protecting raincoat on. I got, my whole life is in here. All my camera gear, everything I ever saved and bought is in this bag. Now you're probably wondering what's inside. So let's take a look. So when I bought this camera bag, it was specifically for the need that I know how I work when I, when I travel around. So usually I come to an airport lounge or wherever I am, I put the camera bag down, I open it, and I want it to have a back access specifically for this task. Quick access to my laptop right here. Also goes if you're sitting on an airplane, you just open the top of it and drag it straight out of your bag. Now that, there's also room for a tablet in the back. I really like how it, you know, your computer is always protected against your back. So when I bought this camera bag, it was extremely important for me that it had internal camera units. And what that is, it's basically an additional bag within the bag that protects your camera gear with, uh, with a soft layer to it. What I really like is that they made those camera internal units fit the bag perfectly. Meaning I have direct access to all my camera gear straight from the top here. 
So I have categorized my camera gear into two different sections. On the left, in my big compartment, I have my essential camera gear. And on the right, I have gear that's more, you know, nice to have, but it's easy to take out. And I'll show you exactly why I have organized it like that in a second. With the easy access from above, like this, it's very easy to access all your camera gear. But it's also made so that if you open it from the top, now this is where I keep all my cables. You also access the internal camera units from the top of the bag while just taking them out easily. So now I'm gonna show you exactly what's inside my camera bag. I'm gonna lay it all out on the table. By doing that, you will also get a better understanding of what goes into my internal camera bags. Let's do this. And there you go, that's everything that's inside my camera bag. When you put it out like that, it doesn't really look like a lot, but the fact that you have these internal camera units with all your camera gear just laid out, it's so organized, it's so nice. Because in the past, I think when I started filmmaking, I had a normal backpack um, and I would just stack everything in there. And if something, you know, if I needed to get something fast, I didn't really know where it was. Like, but by doing it like this, you know exactly where all your camera gear is because you're also packing it and organizing it yourself. And for me personally, I figured out by, that by knowing where my camera gear is within the bag itself, can be those exact seconds or minutes between actually getting a shot or not. If you're out traveling and you see something cool, you immediately want to pull out your camera. You don't want to be looking for a little ND filter or something like that. You want to know exactly where it is so you can easily just get the shot. So now I've gotten everything that I have in the bag out on the table and it's time to talk about the camera gear itself. I also want to add that whenever I'm traveling, I'm always wearing a crossbody bag with my most important things on my chest. This can be your airline tickets, you know, sunscreen, alcohol through the airport, sanitize your hands, you know, passport here, money, everything that you need is very, very close convenient to you. And trust me, if you're doing traveling a lot, like we've been doing, having to go to, into your backpacks, even though it's a very smart compartment, can sometimes be a pain in the ass. The last tip I'm gonna give you guys, before we start jumping into the camera gear, is that always make sure to bring one of these that has the power outlet that fits your region. This has saved me so many times when I come to an hotel or a hostel and they only have one power outlet or for example you're on an, on an airport or on a train terminal and you find one power outlet but you need to charge several things at once, having one of these will make you god. <laughs> Jumping into the camera gear on the table. Woo! And over to the exciting part. So now I put away everything that can't be categorized as a drone, a camera, a GoPro, or just some digital digital asset that I really want to show you. Okay, so starting off with my essential camera unit. My go-to camera that I use every day until they're gonna release a new one <laughs> is the a7 III from Sony. When I bought the Sony a7 III, it's one of the best all-around cameras on the market with a really, really good image state. I think it's 24 megapixel camera in this one. It has 120 frames, 1080p, 4K, 25p on here. The so, lens I have on here is the Sony G Master 1635mm f2.8. I find this is my go-to lens when I'm doing filmmaking because it's just, it's so good, right? With 35, you can really get close in, you can get close-ups, you can do portraits for when you're shooting photography. This, this lens is so good, right? Because it's from 16 to 35. 16 is a very wide shot. Uh, usually when I'm shooting films, I'm shooting, I can be shooting both for horizontal imaging as well as vertical images on Instagram or videos. So when I'm sh shooting 16, I'm making sure to get as much in that frame as possible. So this is my one, my number one go-to camera when it comes to professional travel filmmaking. On top of that, when I'm doing vlogging, I have the Gura de Go mic. This is a very affordable option. I would also recommend to check out the other Pro microphone, which is going to be my next investment. For all my professional drone photography, I am using the DJI Mavic Pro 2. have three batteries in total that I carry with me at all times, because I hate running out of power. That's the worst thing that can happen. One spare battery for the Sony a7 III, the controller for the DJI Mavic Pro 2, ND filters, 
for DJI Mavic Pro 2 is very, very, very important. If you're buying a drone for $1,500, make sure to get these as well for an additional 100. These will make your images so much better. And I got the cinematic pack from Polar Pro, which has both the ND filters as well as the polarizers. This is the Canon G7X2. I've had this for two years now. The reason I have this is because it's so compact and small, has a flip up screen. You can basically use it for anything. A large majority of my vlogs that I've shot on my YouTube channel has been taken with this. Usually if I am vlogging on a large gimbal with my Sony a7 III for a client and I want to do a vlog about the production as well, just having this on me, and it fits in my pocket, right? It's perfect. So I can easily capture moments that I want to get into my vlog. Now if you're a more uh, person that's looking for quality and your full dedication is to YouTube and vlogging, I know a lot of people that are vlogging on the Sony a7 III, which I'm currently vlogging on my friend's Sony a7 III. The camera I'm using for filming this segment is an a7 III. But for me personally, I found it very nice to have a pocket camera like this on me at all times. And it's also my recommendation if you're getting into YouTube, if you're just starting vlogging, you don't need any of all of this. All you need is something like this, or even something as simple as a GoPro. It all depends. I'm just sharing what I am using for my everyday travel. The last that's in my essential camera cube is just a kit lens from Sony, a 16 to 70 millimeter. It's not even a full format lens. But I occasionally pull this out just to shoot different images that I, that I want with a more depth of feel in the background. So there you go. That's my essential camera cube. Moving over to my secondary camera cube. What I like about these cubes though, before we move forward, is that you know you can basically just have all your camera gear with you like this if you're going to a shoot. You don't need a big camera bag. You put the camera bag in your hotel room and just take this with you. Wonderful. Moving over to my secondary camera cube. Now this is what goes on the top of my uh, backpack. And the reason I have this camera gear in here is a lot of times I find myself I'm traveling and I'm bringing my backpack into the hotel room. Um, but it's a, there's a very big difference between traveling with all this gear, all the cables, everything, and when you actually put it in your hotel room, and you're just going out to shoot this amazing place that you came to, then it's very nice to have a secondary camera unit that's not attached to your primaries. Just pull it out of your bag with all the cables and everything you don't really need all the time. Just leave it at the hotel room and your backpack is more light now. You can put in some food there, an extra um, t-shirt if you want to change, get some photos. It's really, really convenient. So what I call my secondary camera cube is I have a second drone in here. I have the DJI Mavic Air. This is the drone that I've been using to get creative shots whenever I don't want to risk the big drone. We use this to fly through holes and whatnot. It's a really, really cool drone. I have an extra battery for that. I have an ND filter for the kit lens, ND filter for the drone, controller, and then I have a portrait lens from Sigma Art 35mm f.14. And this is a lens that me and Ava will use for, for occasional Instagram photography, product photos, stuff that we really need a more blurry background. We'll pull out this lens, but it's not something I carry with me at all times. Okay, so I've now showed you my primarily camera gear, I've showed you my secondary camera gear, and now I'm just going to show you the last few items that I, I really use every day and that I've come to really love. So first thing is obviously you need something to edit everything that you're doing on. So I have a MacBook Pro that I'm doing that with. I have a five year old headset from Sony that I bought in Hawaii at Walmart. Now this thing doesn't break on me, it's not Bluetooth. I hate to run out of power, especially if I'm on a plane. It has an original old cable input and it really, really never fails me. Five years in the making. These can flip out flat, which is convenient when you're trying to pack light. I have a GoPro selfie stick and a GoPro 7 that I always carry with me. I obviously want to upgrade to the GoPro 8, just haven't done that yet. I have a Loon Cube, which, which is just super nice if you're in a dark area. I've actually done a professional commercial shoot with this light <laughs> just because we were crammed with lights and nothing really worked out. 
this, this loom cube has saved me a lot of times and it can give you light whenever you need it. It also can be attached to a tripod, which is very convenient. Last thing is last C hard drives. Now, this is basically all I ever buy if I'm looking for hard drives. All my favorite shots are in these. And this, these drives are built to withstand two tons of pressure. This elastic coat, this rubber coat around the hard drive makes them really robust. It's perfect for travel filmmakers. Wow! Now there's certainly a lot of lenses that I have at home that I didn't bring with me for this trip to the Philippines. But if I was to add two more things to this list, I would add a 7200 from Sony. I'd also consider getting the full version of the 2470. But I am very, very stoked about my everyday camera gear. Uh, I spent several years of my career just saving up, trying to afford everything. And once you have it all, it's really the time to just cram down, create epic shots, and create content that people really like. So for me, what, what I really, really would recommend you to do if you're starting with filmmaking is to consider getting a drone get a decent camera that you can invest in now and that can last you for a couple of years. A lot of creators have said it and it's really true, it's not about necessarily the camera that you have, but how good you are at telling stories. How good are you to transition stories and shots to capture the audience in a way with music and sound effects that make them watch your video. So it's really not about the camera at all, it's more about your storytelling, always remember that. But if you are looking for some advice for someone who has done this for a couple of years, here you go. This is what I have in my camera backpack at all times. Okay guys, to end this vlog, I thought it would be fun to see how fast I can pack all of this back into my essential camera tubes, get into the wander bag, pack it up, and go. I really appreciate it that you guys watched, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, I'll try to answer to my best ability. Keep creating, and I hope that this vlog inspired you. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing as I'm making a lot of travel vlogs and guides and inspirational things from all over the world. And I'd really love for you guys to be part of my community. I'll see you guys on the next video. Let's go.